Morning everybody. As you can see, I'm well wrapped up here this morning. I suspect that the temperature here is about six degrees or so. Uh, although we've got a lovely fog this morning or mist, and that means it's going to be a good day. But we're heading into the winter here. Uh, my intention this morning is to talk to you about cooling gardener engines. Now, I'm not so much going to talk about cooling uh, when the engine's in use. I'm really concerned about cooling whenever the engine is under test here in the yard. Uh, we run these engines for four, five, six, maybe ten hours. So in that time they will get quite hot and we have to be careful we don't let them overheat and we have to bring them up to the required temperature and so on. Um, this is a marinized engine as you can see. It's got a combined heat exchanger and header tank here. The sea water flows in through this port, out through this port. The engine coolant is around in this circuit, so that's why this is called a heat exchanger. The two systems exchange heat with each other. Now, you'll notice that the header tank is not very high up. Uh, equally so, in an automotive engine, in a lorry, say, the radiator, again, would be here. It's not very high up. The point I'm trying to make to you is that the pressure inside here is low. It's not a high pressure system. Okay, as the water inside the engine or the coolant inside the uh, engine heats up, it expands, it has to have somewhere to go. So in the filler cap, this little diaphragm here will be pushed up by the pressure and the excess water or coolant will escape here. It's the same in your, in your car. The difference in a modern engine is this is a high pressure valve here. But in the, in the gardener, it's a low pressure valve. If I take a look at this, it's only 10 PSI. It's nothing. I repeat, the pressure inside the cooling system in a gardener engine is very low. And that's good because that discourages leaks. So our first system, the first system that we tried was simply a 40 gallon barrel. We got a plastic 40, 40 gallon barrel we drilled a hole in the bottom, we connected the bottom of the barrel to the water pump here, we connected the top of the barrel to the output from the thermostat. It worked grand. After a few hours, the water in the barrel got hot, but we could simply put in a garden hose and that would control the temperature. But we had to place the barrel up here on pallets or on a frame of some sort. And at the end of the day, we were left with a barrel of really quite hot water. Now, I could add in some uh, washing powder into that barrel, drop in my overalls and soak them and get a nice pair of clean overalls. Even whenever the children were very warm, we could... Oh, no, we'll not go that far. Okay, so the barrel was worked okay, but we were left with a big volume of water which you had to toss out in the yard. And it was a bit of a mess, really. So we had to devise something better. And we'll go on to that now. Okay, this was our first uh, system. We simply connected that on there like that. Mains pressure come on here, but it wasn't allowed to build up because this was held up in the air like this um, by a piece of uh, baler twine or cord or whatever. Um, the idea of this was <coughs> it prevented a siphon so that if the mains water ever did stop, the coolant couldn't be siphoned out of the engine. But I think you'll have to agree, it's not very elegant. And also, we would no way of controlling the flow. And also, the engine never really got hot because it was constantly getting cold water from the mains. So we had to go one better. And we move on to that now. This is our final system, the one that we've settled on, and it works quite well. Again, it's very simple. We'll have mains pressure coming in here to this valve. It comes up this tube here and it builds up a pressure no more than that. The pressure on the engine can't be any more than that because the surplus water will flow out through this elbow and back into the drainage system in a way. I hope you've got that. Now equally so here that seems mains pressure means water comes up this tube here and into the water pump as before. Round the engine, back out through the thermostat, 
up through this tube here, out through that pipe, back down here, and again, out to the drain and away. It works very well. This pipe stat here can control the temperature of the water. Um, if you listen very carefully, and you'll notice this uh, bulb coming on here, that tells us when the valve has been activated. So if the temperature in the engine, as detected by this pipe stat here, gets too high, it simply switches, activates that V valve, lets the mains water off, it'll come through the engine and cool the engine down again. It works grand. We find that we can hold the temperature of the engine at typically 60, 70 degrees, uh, no, no problem. So we're very happy with that, very pleased. Uh, this <coughs> pipe here that hasn't been finished is again to stop a siphoning effect. If by any chance the mains were to fail, uh, the water will not be siphoned out of the engine. And this pipe here does the same job here. It just stops the water siphoning off here. So super job. I hope you found that of interest. Remember, it's just for testing engines. It's not for uh, a production system. Thank you very much.